You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. My name is Bonis Sinoe, and I am the Managing Director at Server Sentinel, Chief Compliance Officer, and the President of Talatech LLC. I was a a young 17-year-old who was looking at computers and thinking those are so cool and I really wanted to understand how they work and I wanted to be, you know, a computer person, whatever that meant at the time (laughs) from my inexperienced mind. But I just felt that this is something new and nobody else knew what it is and I wanted to be the one who did. I I went to an engineering school, control and systems engineering, and really since then I have had any career you can think of in, in, I would call it, quote-unquote, IT, from help desk and managing desktops and motherboards and VGA cards, <laughs> all the way to systems engineering, network engineering, managing variety of aspects of cybersecurity for companies and, and businesses. While I started from a technical, you know, education and training as a founder of a business and running a business, the technical side is maybe 20% of what my day-to-day looks like. A lot of it is more of managing the business, managing clients, managing teams, managing my time. A lot of growth in all these areas um, with the foundation of really understanding what the solution need to be and, and, and helping others get there. So it's a fun day, very busy day, (laughs) and there's always so much more to do. I think if I am successful, it's because I've really made the right decisions about the team and the folks that I work with. I've I've been um, both fortunate and I give myself credit for picking the right people, and I'm not always successful in doing that, obviously, but it's really what I aspire to do and make sure people are allowed the opportunity to grow and and do things that they find challenging. And I've had folks who've worked with me for almost a decade now, and it's just, we've continued to grow and do new things. So that's sort of something I'm very proud of. Even when I started the business, I, like I talked about, I was, my background is mostly technology. You know, I'm, I would characterize myself as a geek. I veered into more of a regulatory compliance focus for my business only because I realized that is uh, a business opportunity and it needs, there's a lot that we could do in that space from, you know, just pure supply and demand, if you will. But at the same time, wanted to do it differently than others. Honestly, back in 2006, uh, offering a managed service wasn't that popular. You know, it wasn't a cloud and people businesses mostly wanted to have their own software on their own server in their own environment. In 2008, we offered a managed service hosted elsewhere and we were able to get a small contract and and built on that. And since then, we've been innovating and, you know, obviously the cloud and SaaS solutions are very prevalent right now, right? Most people are moving to the cloud. 
So it's just the fun of doing something new and, you know, getting it wrong a lot and getting it right sometimes. <laughs> It is very important to me as a woman in tech, everything, even, you know, when I talk about when I was a young kid trying to learn computers, it wasn't really necessarily the popular thing for other girls to do. And throughout my career, I I cannot say that this is a female-centric career path, right? <laughs> it's definitely male-dominated. Um, I am currently part of a larger organization. I th- I believe, you know, I am one of the few management roles who are females. And it, I have two young uh, girls who I like to set, you know, help them find their path through the uh, their career path. And helping other women realize that there are opportunities, encouraging them, providing a, a community of like-minded women who can either provide role model or, or mentorship. Even just to know that, you know, there's somebody to ask if you need help, I think. To me, that was tremendously helpful to know that I could reach out to other women and, you know, even if I just have lunch with them and just kind of brainstorm about what am I doing and, and what have they done, what worked for them, what didn't work. That, that sense of community amongst women is something that I am keen about and I really would like to continue to do and, and, and nurture other women in this field. I think I've held myself back so many opportunities and so many I would you know no regrets <laughs> all that led to where I am today but I certainly could have done more had I not been so unsure of myself and thinking you know I, there's no way I could do this I definitely need somebody else to help me and hold my hand and even with my business I spent several years I would say almost six seven years looking for a partner thinking I can't do it on my own and it just It took years for me to realize, wait a second, I've been doing it myself for the last eight years. Maybe I could do it myself. (laughs) I really wasn't sure. It's just just this realization that uh, it took me years to realize. And I, I, if anything, I want to tell my younger self and other young women, you know, just we really need that confidence, that ability to trust ourselves and, and, and be courageous, honestly. Now, a word from our sponsor, the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute, currently seeking qualified applicants for its innovative Master of Science in Security Informatics degree program. Study alongside world-class interdisciplinary experts and gain unparalleled educational, research, and professional experience in information security and assurance. Interested U.S. citizens should consider the National Science Foundation's CyberCore Scholarship for Service program, which covers tuition and a $6,000 annual professional development allowance, as well as providing a $37,000 additional annual stipend. Apply for the scholarship and the fall semester by March 1st. Learn more at cs.jhu.edu slash MSSI. MSSI.